What's up, Brewery Life? Jasper here. You guys all juiced up for another how-to microbrewery video? I am. Um, today we're going to be talking about the cylindro conical fermenters behind me and how to drop their cone, uh, blow their cone, eject their cone, however you guys want to say it. That's what we're going to be showing you guys today. So stay tuned. Okay, so why do microbreweries uh, drop their cone or blow their cone? It really helps us get a clearer product if you keep blowing out what settles during um, the fermentation process. This racking arm right here it allows you to be able to turn it and bend it and find um, the compact a little easier. Where if you had a bunch of uh, trubber um, product in there, that undesirable product, it'd be really hard to turn that racking arm because it could just be flooded with a bunch of crap you don't want. Um, dropping your cone, you can get rid of your cold break. So that's a uh, polyphenol protein that maybe is carried over from your whirlpool. You can blow that undesirable uh, flavors out. It helps you get rid of your yeast. So if you leave yeast under the beer too long, it'll autolyze. That means just the yeast blows up. Maybe it's just under stress. Uh, yeasts are made up of their cell wall lipids and proteins, and that can lead to uh, flavor problems, head retention problems, things like this. Uh, we also drop our cone to remove our hops after our dry hopping um, resume. The hops can be blown out. If hops stay in there too long, it might lead to some vegetable or grassy notes. Um, it also leads to a really big problem cleaning your fermenter. So I get a lot of uh, emails about people having a hard time doing that CIP video because they're just trying to clean their fermenter after a dry hop and uh, the bottom blowout gets plugged and stuck with a bunch of hops, it's probably because they didn't blow their cone or drop their cone enough um, after that dry hopping to help blow out those hops. Whereas if you just wait for the cleaning process, you can have a stuck plug down there that's kind of hard to remove. So those are just some of the reasons breweries uh, drop their cone. When do you guys want to be dropping your cone? So on uh, the cold break, I like to drop the cone right after fermentation has picked up um, and then just drop it that first day of fermentation really quick. It's a small amount of uh, polyphenol, but that can lead to like kind of staling and changing the color of the beer if it gets over oxygenated. So right after fermentation picks up, I like to drop a little cone um, that might be leftover uh, crap from the whirlpool and the heat exchanging cooling down process. I like to drop the cone on uh, yeast after I harvest the yeast. So I harvest what I want out of the fermenter and I got my poundage I'm looking for. I'll make sure I drop the rest of the yeast after my yeast harvest. Um, hops, I like to blow out the hops after I'm done with my dry hopping cycle. Um, fruit can also be added in a fermenter. So you'll want to blow out your fruit when you're done leaving your fruit in there for as long as the flavor profile you're going for is wanted um, so you don't have some over ripening problems. And then usually just if you leave your tank crashed and cold um, a couple times a week is a good rule of thumb to drop your cone just to help anything that's settling out in that beer while it's crashed and cold um, doesn't stay under the beer and lead to any problems. So that's um, when do we drop our cones. Parts you'll need um, to complete the blowing of your cone or dropping of your cone. I just have some parts sitting in uh, some parasitic acid sanitizing bucket right now. Let's take a look at what I got. I have a 90 degree elbow in here. Sometimes I just need this to help uh, direct which way the, the undesirables are going. So a 90 degree elbow. I have a sight glass in here. So this sight glass allows a brewer to be able to look to see what's coming out of the bottom blowout of your tank. Um, lets you know when it turns to beer and when to stop dropping your cone so you don't waste too much beer um, doing this. I have my trusty diaphragm. Uh, valve here. This uh, valve, if you haven't seen some of my last parts video, is a great valve to control the flow rate of a, of a liquid. 
you have a lot of flow control turning this valve, whereas a butterfly just has a really good on-off control really quick, but it's hard to uh, do the flow control when it's dropping. So this is a diaphragm valve. I have a sanitary to gas quick connect. It looks like a quarter inch IM gas quick connect here. This allows us to be able to put CO2 pressure on the tank when we are dropping our cone. We have an inch and a half sanitary clamp here. This is what our fittings are in this brewery. And EPDM uh, gasket. So we use EPDM style gaskets for this kind of uh, process. So you may also need a, a brewer's hose to direct the undesirables to where you want it to go, whether it's like an ag recycle or uh, collect it, be thrown the, into the trash. Um, what you blow out of your cone is a lot of solids, really bumps up your TSS, your total suspended solids in your wastewater. Um, as a responsible brewery, you don't want to send too many solids down the drain. So a good way to kind of collect these solids is maybe just throw a screen over your uh, floor drain and collect uh, these kind of solids that come out of these tanks and put them in the trash rather than throw them down your drain. It'll help your wastewater treatment plant, whether you do it on site or a city uh, does it for you. Um, you could dry the, dry the dry hops out if you get charged by uh, weight before you throw them in the trash, if that helps you. But just be aware of what we're dumping out of these cones. Have a lot of solids and that does affect your wastewater. All right guys, so step one I like to do is I get my isopropyl alcohol. So I like using 70% isopropyl alcohol as just my kind of surface sanitizer in a lot of places in the brewery. Uh, a cool fact that I didn't know starting out was 70% uh, alcohol is a lot better at killing any microbes than say a 99, 92% isopropyl alcohol. It kind of seems backwards in your brain but that 70% isopropyl has enough water mixed in where it kind of penetrates the cells a little bit more, doesn't evaporate as fast, and actually is a better uh, topical sanitizer than like a 99% isopropyl alcohol. So if you're gonna get a pretty cost efficient and really effective sanitizer, 70% isopropyl is the way to go. So that's what I have here in this little spray bottle. Uh, when I start out and I know what cones I'm gonna drop for the day, I'll make sure I spray some uh, isopropyl down here in this bottom blowout. So I'll just flush it out like that. Cause you do open this butterfly valve and it's exposed to the inside of the tank when you drop your cone. So I like to just hit that with some sanitizer, let it sit for a couple minutes before I hook up all my parts. So that would be step one of uh, blowing your cone. Okay, step two is just to make sure we have positive pressure on the tank. Anytime you're gonna take stuff out of a, a tank, you really wanna make sure you have positive pressure. Or when the tank's cold, you wanna make sure it's staying under positive pressure. This allows um, no air to get inside the tank. Worst case scenario, um, the tank implodes because you're taking too much uh, liquid out of it and not adding pressure to it. Uh, it just helps way to lower oxygen. So I connect um, the gas quick connect I showed you onto the spray ball racking arm, not the blow off racking arm. I like doing the spray ball racking arm because I find it's a, it's a clearer tube going up where that blow off racking arm had all that fermentation uh, crap coming out of it. So I don't like bumping my gas up in the blow off arm because I think it blows kind of dirt around uh, soilage in the, in the beer. So we hook up to the spray ball racking arm. I have my CO2 uh, sanitary gas here. Before I go full board hooking it up, I like to give it a couple pops because there is a little bit of O2 trapped in that spot. So before you just go full Nelly and hook this thing up, give it a couple pops. Kind of see CO2 coming out of there. And then we'll hook it up for real. Um, 
I like to keep my tanks when they're cold around 10 PSI or so. Tanks will usually lose a little bit of PSI, so it's a good tank management, fermentation management system to bump up your tanks every day or two to make sure uh, they're staying under pressure. So let's go ahead and get this FV6 up to around 10 PSI. There we go, step two done. Okay, so next we just wanna hook up all our parts to our bottom blow off. First goes our sight glass. Next, diaphragm valve. And next, your brewer's hose to direct the undesirables. And that's what the bottom blowout looks like when we get ready to uh, drop our cone. Okay, so first you want to make sure just your diaphragm valve is completely closed. Start from zero on that one. After that, we'll open our actual tank bottom blowout butterfly valve. Nothing yet, all the way open. And then we'll start releasing um, the undesirables with our diaphragm valve. Just slowly opening it. Looks like some old yeast has settled down there first in this tank and you just want to drop your cone nice and slow so it doesn't punch a hole in the cone um, you want it to more fall off the sides of the cone to remove everything rather if you just do it with your butterfly real quick it'll actually punch a hole through and you're not going to be able to get everything you want out of the tank so we're just slowly going to uh, watch this drop and open this diaphragm valve as we need until we see um, the yeast or beer, uh, the yeast turn to beer and uh, the, the consistency of the solids change. Sometimes it will punch through really quick and catch you off guard and this diaphragm valve is really hard to close quick so you always have this butterfly as an emergency shut off. If it starts flowing too quick, bam, you slam that just so you don't uh, get out ahead of yourself. So always keep that in mind is that the, this is the flow control but this is your emergency shut off if things start going too quick on you. See how it's starting to change right there? Switches out, it's good enough. You don't wanna to go too long um, once it starts turning that beer-like consistency or else you're just gonna be waiting, wasting product. It's better to let it sit for another day, compact a little harder and drop it then. So that's what it looks like when it changes from yeast to beer, dropping your cone. So now we're dropping our dry hops out of that tank. Um, you can see the different uh, color and consistency, and that's about a good flow rate to be dropping your cone at.
So after you've uh, done dropped and blown your cone, um, disconnect all the parts from the bottom blow off butterfly valve. I like hitting it with water um, to clean that little spot up and then hit that bottom blowout with some isopropyl again. And that's how I'll leave it till next time. Yep. Okay, now we can uh, bump back up our tank. As you can see, we had it at 10 after dropping our cone. It went down to around eight PSI. So I'll bump it back up to 10. And we'll leave the pressure like that. So we'll disconnect the gas after that. And then we'll take off our uh, bottom gas quick connect. I kind of want to give you guys just a, a warning um, right now about the brewery job and stuff. So if I was to just not be uh, focused at this point and undid this clamp right here that's above this butterfly valve rather than this one that's right below it, pretty easy to do right next to each other. This would just blow the whole tank full of pressure. This valve wouldn't be able to stop this pressure that this tank's holding. And it's just undoing this clamp rather than this clamp. The last uh, person I was training uh, almost pretty much killed us both by undoing the clamp on this side of the butterfly valve uh, rather than the outside of the butterfly valve. It'll blow your eardrums out, probably ruin a batch of beer. Uh, worst case scenario is you ruin, or best case scenario uh, is you would ruin a batch of beer. Um, personally, I actually did this um, years ago to the bottom blowout valve. Um, if you wanna move down here, I had the hose connected to this bottom side. Instead of busting uh, this clamp on the tank, I actually, I guess, was slipping my mind and did this clamp behind it. Beer just started blowing out of this tank at, you know, 11 PSI. I was really, really lucky to have an inch and a half sanitary cap um, real nearby that I was able to cap that giant pressure. And, and I lost about two barrels of beer blew up all over me. I had hypothermia, 32 degrees, zero degrees Celsius beer all over me just from doing this clamp instead of this clamp. So a lot of times in the brewery, we're having fun um, and messing around, but 20% of the time of the brewery, you have to treat it like holding a loaded gun. You can't make a mistake and you have to be focused. So I just wanted to give you guys that warning um, of what the professional commercial brewer um, goes through on a daily basis. Cause we do a hundred of these clamps on a daily basis and you can't make a mistake. So just a warning for you guys, if you're about to get into the industry. That does it for me here at the brewery. Um, hopefully I gave you guys a good in-depth look, look at some things I do to babysit my tanks and to produce better beer. Um, if you want to follow these steps, awesome. If you want to do your own thing, awesome too. Boom, boom, boom. There you guys go. Another uh, how-to video for everyone out there. Um, I'm sure you guys enjoyed that one. It was pretty fun to make, um, pretty long. I just wanted to let you know I have been getting a few emails about people wanting to donate to the channel. I don't ask for money, but uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that on uh, brewerylife.com there is a donation PayPal button if you guys want to help support the channel maybe uh, help me get a microphone so you can hear me better or something like that that'd be pretty cool also on that website I have uh, an ebook that I wrote in 2014 trying to help people start breweries way back then um, so you could check out the, that short little ebook I have too uh, the link for that is also uh, brewerylife.com I'll leave uh, it in the description down below. Just wanted to let you guys know. Don't feel obligated to do that. Um, but for the people that do, thank you. Thank you so much. I uh, super appreciate it. And uh, until next time, cheers.